Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Karavik and I'm giving a taster lecture um, entitled High Definition Geomorphology. Geomorphology is the study of the Earth's surface and the processes that shape it. And we want to study the Earth's surface to understand um, how it works, what it's made of, and perhaps of most utility to mitigate um, things that affect uh, human lives and livelihoods. So there's a few photographs and um, to illustrate reasons why we might do that. And our ability to study the shape of the Earth's surface has um, revolutionised in the last few decades. So we've moved from uh, an analogue era where we were limited to optical surveying, um, which was quite slow and cumbersome, to a fully digital and semi-automated um, routines now. And this is through the era of differential GPS systems in the 1990s, uh, which is rather more sophisticated than the GPSs you have in your smartphone uh, or on your car dashboard, to uh, laser scanners, um, which were first mounted on aircraft um, and had the ability to calculate the position of millions of points um, in a single survey um, since 2000. But now we can mount laser scanners uh, on survey tripods um, for ground-based applications. And ter terrestrial laser scanners send out um, a light, a laser, um, which is reflected off a surface back to the scanner and the time that it takes to do that is recorded to calculate the remote position. And the scanner does this many, many uh, tens of thousands of times a second um, to build up a three-dimensional uh, point cloud. Now, the School of Geography has a laser scanner, and this is an example of one of the university buildings. You can see the um, three-dimensional um, information in the bottom right hand corner, that's the grayscale image, but you can also see a rather garish image of the same building obtained simultaneously. And this is because the laser scanner also returns not just the position of um, the remote object um, for every point, but also the reflectance values. And you can see that the reflectance values depend on the material properties. So in this case, um, concrete, brick, glass, tarmac, slate tiles, all appear differently and give us information about um, the material and the building as a whole. So it's quite um, important that we can now measure very, very quickly, not just um, where something is and its size and its shape and its position, but also um, its composition, what it's made of. And we can do that extremely fast and remotely. So if we apply this to um, something of interest in the natural environment, here's a glacier in northern Sweden. And um, we took um, one of our undergraduate students because um, we'd helped them obtain a Royal Geographical Society um, fieldwork apprenticeship. And you can see that um, we've got a similarly garish image of the front of this glacier. The ice has come out in red, um, some snow is in yellow, um, and the um, tundra coloured vegetation um, and hillsides are in the cyan blue colour. We've also got areas of no data um, where there's holes in the glacier, crevasses, or where there is a lake at the glacier terminus. Inadvertently, we also had some reindeer cross between the glacier and our survey station and we um, obtained what we believe to be the first and the only um, scan of a reindeer. So we've got the material properties and the size and the shape and the position of the reindeer at this time. The first case study I'd like to show you is um, of States Cliffs, a rapidly eroding coastline, um, hazardous to um, people enjoying the beach, um, to fishing um, and obviously of concern to um, people on the cliff top, the caravan sites and the old mining sites too. And the first thing you'll notice is the 
scale uh, this survey. It's many, many hundreds of meters in width, many tens of meters in height, and the resolution, you'll have to believe me if we zoom in, um, is about um, 20 to 30 points per square meter. So very, very high resolution survey. First of all, this enables us to do some traditional mapping of the coastline. These bars on the um, line graph give us the uncertainty associated with um, the plan form of the coastline in historical data. So this is from aerial photographs. And then this thin blue line is the uncertainty associated with uh, the laser scan measurement. So we can update our maps. We know more accurately where the coastline is. But the real wealth of information in the laser scan survey is when we look sideways, which of course we cannot do from satellite images or from aerial photographs. And in this um, rather speckled image, we've differenced two successive uh, scan surveys and we can see where the cliffs have changed the most. So these are these uh, bullseye um, type um, features here where red has um, got large displacements and blue is rather less so. And by doing multiple surveys through time, we can also see that temporarily the um, changes to our cliffs are not uniform. The second case study I'd like to show you is from Fox Glacier. This is very steep, it's very fast moving, very inaccessible. We had four scan positions around the front and merged scans uh, from uh, each day to produce a single point cloud. And we've discovered that the glacier is not moving as a single coherent block. We've divided this long profile into zones, A to G, and for each we um, interpret um, a different style of movement. So block A, all the movement um, is negative. That means um, away from the scanner. And so too um, for block G, around zero. Block F is also coherent, where its entirety is towards the scanner. And then blocks B, C, D and E are all rather transitional, where there's large jumps and breaks um, with movement relatively towards or away from the scanner. So what we've realised is that this is a very good way of understanding what's known as glacier tectonics, where we have coherent blocks of ice within the entire glacier and one block moves relative to the other. So there's pushing, um, maybe some tension and probably some normal faulting as one block um, is forced up against another and perhaps even begins to topple uh, and rotate. And if I were to tell you that um, just a kilometre or so down valley from this glacier is a township uh, that's subject to um, regular flooding and um, aggradation of sediment, then in understanding the movement of this glacier and its importance and perhaps uh, becomes a bit more tangible. So hopefully I've convinced you that by studying the size, the shape, the position and the um, surface properties of something, we can help to understand the processes um, by which it's working, the why and the how things are changing. Technology is offering us new and exciting opportunities to detect and monitor these changes and the applications really are limited um, by our imagination. And I can hear you all screaming at me, but I haven't got access to an expensive scanner. Well, you have got access to um, cameras, either in your smartphones or a handheld camera like the good old days. And you can mount those cameras on um, UAVs, which are surprisingly cheap now, um, to get a better um, set of views um, or a larger coverage. UAVs also enable you to repeat surveys very, very quickly. You can also simply hold the camera in your hand and walk around your object of interest um, from different viewpoints and use some clever software to stitch the photographs together. And indeed, this is what I would like you to do for your homework. Take your smartphone, 
um, and photograph an object from different positions, making sure that there's good overlap between successive images and upload those images to Microsoft Photosynth. It's online and that software will make a 3D model for you. The example in the photograph here is a Coca-Cola can in case uh, you don't recognize it. The second part of your homework is to think how you could use this technology to address a geomorphological question. Thank you very much.